Now, to discuss this further, I'm joined in the studio by Conservative peer in the House of Lords, Daniel Moylan, and Labour councillor, Pamana Asset. Welcome to you both, Pamana. Thank you. You've not been on with me before. <laughs> it's great to see you. Um, the 1951 Convention on Human uh, on Refugees. Uh, 1951 is a long time ago. Uh, you and I don't dri- drive 1951 cars. Is there any reason at all why we shouldn't look at reforming a 1951 convention? So I think the first thing we need to understand is that why did the convention come about? Um, and that was because in the wake of World War II, with refugees having to leave their home countries and seek refuge elsewhere. And these conditions were put in place in order to have a more welcoming and open armed uh, policies in, in the countries that were receiving these refugees. Um, we saw what happened in World War II with the kinder transport coming to uh, the United Kingdom with refugees coming here. And so I, I believe that th- th- those laid the foundations of, yes. of where we start. But aren't you making my point? That no. That the conditions were very different. So I, be- I, I agree that conditions have changed and things have changed and moved on and, and we, we're seeing different types of migration, different types of refugees coming here. But we have to try and think about what the, that foundation actually says to us. That foundation says that one of the first things is that you don't have to claim refuge, refuge in the first quote-unquote safe country that you arrive. All right, but, but let's put it and, another way. And, does, 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 so, does it say that if you've come from a perfectly safe country like France... That you've got to be but, treated but where, as though you've come from a dangerous place. But here's place. the thing. Where are those refugees actually coming from? So when we look at the small boat migration to the UK, most of the refugees there are from Libya, Syria, Afghanistan. You don't see Ukrainians on those boats. You don't see Ukrainians drowning on those boats. Why is that? It's because we have a different policy for Ukrainians than we do for those kinds of refugees. Now, we have but, to try and... make the, the point that they're coming from a safe country. But they're not coming from a safe country, Pro- technically, because that's a, that's a journey that they're making. And their, their final destination is the United Kingdom. So, so how can France be um, the, the country that they should... Or, you know, the Refugee Convention says you don't have to actually claim asylum in France just because you arrive there. If their final destination is coming to the United Kingdom, who says that they have to claim, claim asylum in France? Would you, would you, as, as, think of yourself, if you were a refugee fleeing somewhere like Afghanistan from the Taliban, the Taliban currently imprison, torture men and boys, don't allow women go, to go to work, don't allow girls to go to school, you don't have economic prospects in that country either. This, so, this, all, this is all very emotive, but I don't think it meets the point they're coming to Britain from France. Well, no, they're, they're not. They're coming from Afghanistan. They're just using France as a, a, a route to get here. OK. Uh, Daniel Moynan, um, <laughs> let's stick with this point for the moment. Do you think that a convention that was drawn up in 1951, in the circumstances that have been described to us following the Second World War, is fit for purpose today? Is there anything wrong with questioning it? Well, of course we can question it. And <clears throat> whether it's fit for purpose or not, it's certainly being used in a very different way. The, the idea very often uh, in the 1951 convention is that people would suffer uh, some terrible catastrophe in their home country and they would have to flee into another a neighbouring country um, because they were not safe where they were. And that there they would find uh, safety and some sort of accommodation and basic facilities, always with a view, as far as possible, to returning to their home country when, safe, when it was safe and circumstances allowed. What it's now become is a charter whereby huge travel agencies, uh, criminal travel agencies, arrange transcontinental travel um, with a view to permanent settlement in the place where you're actually arriving. And yes, we know, Panna's Panna's right, we know their final destination is the UK because they bought a ticket to the UK from these criminal travel agencies. None of this was envisaged when the convention was drawn up, so it's operating in totally different circumstances. On on the other hand, can you understand that our European neighbours say that just because Britain has left the European Union doesn't mean that Britain shouldn't have to share in the burden which is being borne by Europe. You think of an island like Lampedusa, where thousands of people are arriving, I mean, on a daily basis, dwarfing the local population. And the Italians, and the French for that matter, say, why on earth should Britain not share in the immigration problem which which afflicts all of Europe? Well, of course they're going to say that, and you can understand why they say that, but there is an answer to it. Not everybody will like the answer. And the answer is that actually geography matters. And the fact that we're an island means that we we, we in principle are likely to get fewer refugees arriving here than you are going to get in Lampedusa and Greece and so on, closer to the places where the, 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 the migration starts. And if we want to do something to help refugees, and it's a perfectly common and humane 
common humane ambition to want to do so, taking them into Britain uh, and throwing away that geographical advantage is not necessarily the only thing to do. We can be giving money, and we do give money, to help refugees in camps, refugees who've been displaced elsewhere. We do it directly. We do it through the UN uh, High Commissioner for Refugees. So it's not our obligation to take refugee, refugees in. And it, the French may not like it that we're at the end of the, the, you know, the, end of the continent, but that's where geography has placed us. Pimana, so Ella also spoke about multiculturalism. How do you assess it? Do you think it's been a success, a failure, or a mixed, a mixed bag? I think it's very mixed, um, to be honest. But one, one thing I do want to say about her comments, you know, when I, when I listened to them first, well, I listened to the, the speech and I kind of felt sick. But um, that particular comment, I thought it's, it's very mixed um, because belonging means that you can be your full true self in the country that, that you grow up in, right? Um, if you look at me, for example, I come from an Afghan background, but I very much consider myself British, you know, and there's lots of mannerisms and things that I do that my mother says that's so English. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think that, um, you know, we, we have to look at this as making sure that people don't live in bubbles and are, have access to opportunities. How do we make uh, sure they don't live in bubbles? Well, one, we don't have an actual integration scheme like other countries in Europe do. Um, you know, I heard in, in Holland, for example, one of the, the things is that you have to learn how to ride a bicycle, for example, um, uh, as part of your citizenship journey. Um, you know, so these are cultural things that people are sort of to. We now have what the Life in UK test that people have to take before they get naturalisation in the UK. So I think that there are things that we can do to try and help encourage that. But what I see, you know, cu cu cutting English language lessons or cu cutting funding to schools, cutting funding to, to these kinds of services that are needed to help progress that kind of integration isn't exactly beneficial. Uh, Pamana and Daniel, excuse me and thank you.